Um, there is an intimate connection between the first Australians and the most recent Australians and the racism that's inflicted on them you know, from an uncaring government in Canberra. The, um, I, think, I think one of the things I did want to say was partly in response to what Theresa said, I mean, I keep going because we keep going. I mean, the fact is that Refugee Week, once upon a time in Australia, was a kind of day to actually celebrate you know, the, the government's policies, bringing people into Australia and get people being integrated into Australia, they told the success stories. Now the fact is that, that there are these kinds of protests happen all over Australia. Right, there may only be you know, 80, 100 of us you know, here, in, here in Newcastle, but we know that we are part of tens of thousands of people across this country who do not and will not put up with the policies that come from the, from the federal government. Yeah! That's the message for Refugee Week. Dutton, Dutton knows now that he can't go around parading himself. If Australia is an international pariah, and it is an international pariah because of its human rights abuses that it presides over on Manus and Nauru, it's part, partly a, re a response to the fact that there is a movement in Australia which has pointed the finger at a government that is responsible for those, for those human rights abuses. And I think that's one of the strengths that we can take out of what we've done. I mean, I look around, we see grandmothers for refugees, doctors for refugees, teachers for refugees, librarians for refugees, actors for refugees. I mean, the fact is, there is an extraordinary movement across Australia, which has laid a bedrock, a solid foundation that says we are not going to stop until the offshore detention centres are closed, until the onshore detention centres are closed, until we've got a refugee policy that says anybody who crosses the, crosses the seas and crosses our borders and seeks asylum is going to get a welcome response here from the government. That's the policy you know, that we need. I think over the last little while we've actually seen that part of the policy has been bookended. Um, but, you know, Rod referred earlier on to the, uh, the settlement that come from Slater and Gordon, the $70 million settlement plus the $20 million for the, uh, for the legal fees. Now, now, in one respect, I think it was a very welcome response. It was one of those things that we all know who's responsible for the abuses on Manus Island. We, we know that it's the Australian government. That the admission that came out of the settlement with Slater and Gordon was you know, a little bit of vindication in that respect. And certainly internationally, and I know from the calls that I got you know, internationally, the international community were absolutely flabbergasted, astounded, you know, that the Australian government should be held to, the, held to account to the point where, they, where there was a, a settlement that said they had to pay 70 million for what they've done simply on, you know, simply on Manus Island. They found it extraordinary. Um, their own governments involved in similar kinds of policies, you know, as well. But I think we also need to look, that's, that's on the one hand, you know, so it was, a, it was one of those little admissions. And I think we also need to bear in mind, although they, they, Dutton has been concerned to say, you know, there is no public admission about, you know, the, the, the Australian government's guilt. But everybody knows behind the Slater and Gordon settlement that the Australian government is guilty. Does anybody here doubt for one minute if they thought that there was any possibility that a court would find them innocent, that the court wouldn't find that they were responsible, that they didn't have damages to pay, that they wouldn't have gone to court? No! Of course, of course they wouldn't have gone to court. They, there, is, there is an implicit admission in that, in that finding. But I think you also need to see it bookended, so we've got that on the one hand, on the other, some of the people would know here, but there were two, three days ago, a Bangladeshi man almost had his arm hacked off you know, by an incident on, you know, on Manus Island. With those, you know, drunk locals trying to take the phone, trying to take the money, trying to steal his bags. His arm's almost been hacked off as a, as a cop. And they want to say, Papua New Guinea is safe. I mean, the fact is, and I think we also have to bear that in mind, I mean, I don't hold any ill will for the people of, the people of Papua New Guinea. But the fact is the Australian government has plonked a detention centre on Manus Island, which has been an abomination. It's been a social and economic abomination. And if we want to see, you know, the, want to understand why the locals, you know, respond in that way, then we have to look at the, the, the government that actually placed that detention centre there and has created such so, social and economic divisions on, you know, on Manus Island. None of that takes away from the fact that it is unsafe. Papua New Guinea has not got any resettlement program. It's not got any resettlement program. The, Manus, the, the governor of Manus Island, the local politicians of Manus Island made it very clear there will not be any refugees settled in Manus Island. And so I think that's the other side of, that's the, other side of the thing. To, 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 to be honest, when I looked at that 70 million, as much as I, you know, I was thankful that there was some of that public recognition, if you like, and most people understood what that, what that actually meant, when you do the sums, 
And even if so, even if you want to look at it, you know, about 36,000 people might get if you divide it by 70 million by, you know, by 2,000. Some people may end up, you know, with a little bit more than that. But the fact is that 80,000 or 100,000 doesn't buy a future on Papua New Guinea. It doesn't buy a future anywhere else in anywhere else in the world. And there are many people, you know, on you know, on Manus Island, still on Manus Island, who didn't want a settlement that kept the that kept the evidence away from the public. They didn't want a settlement that could be stitched up behind, you know, closed doors. The hundreds of thousands of pages that Slater and Gordon are sitting on, the the 50 odd. Uh, people who are going to give evidence about the abuses that have been inflicted on Manus Island. That's not going to be public because there has been a settlement. And that's where we all come we all come into play, I think, because it is up to us to make that public. For people to, to understand the stories, the, the history, the, the, the stark reality of what uh, of what is of what is Man of what is Manus Island. Because I think it's out, out of that. Now uh, the, the court may, they may have managed to get away with it as far as the Slater and Gordon uh, settlement is concerned, but we need to understand, you know, that that that, that evidence people that, that needs to get out. People need to understand what people have actually what are, have actually gone through. I think the other thing two two weeks ago was also bookended something about Manus Island. I mean, some people may have uh, come to uh, Sydney for the Sydney Film Festival, yeah. but people would know that uh, Barry's Bachani's uh, film made in secret on Manus Island was got its world premiere at the, at, in, in Sydney, uh, Charcot Police Palace at the time. And at the same time that there's a world premiere for Beirut's film, there was one very significant person who wasn't at the film festival, and that was Beirut. Now Beirut has been found to be a refugee, in spite of the fact that he's never made an application on Papua New Guinea, I need to say, uh, but he's nonetheless found to be a refugee. Beirut has made an application you know, to come to Australia to attend, to attend the film festival. He got no response you know, to, that, you know, to that application. The Sydney Film Festival uh, made it clear that they wanted Beirut and Arash's co-producer was there. But there wasn't, uh, Beirut wasn't at the, film, at the festival. Now it's a, it's a bit of the same story. The Australian government, in spite of the fact you know, of that recognition over the, over the settlement of its, of its responsibility, nonetheless retains the power of life and death, of migration and not migration out of, out of Manus Island, what's going to happen, you know, by, and we can see that by what happened with, uh, you know, with Beirut. And people can see the film and, and get some idea of, you know, what life is like inside, you know, inside Manus Island. But you, what you won't get, what, what you won't get is the is the is is the the experience of Chowka itself. Chowka was a solitary confinement area where people were systematically abused, where people were stripped and handcuffed, you know, for in a place where they could use. It was a solitary confinement area where they could uh, try to try to maintain try to maintain control. So I think that brings me to the to what needs to happen now. As I said before, it doesn't matter how much money come out of that settlement. There's still the, the big question is still what is the what's the future? What's the future for the people of Manus? What's the future for people on Nauru? And what do we need? What do we need to do about it? And that brings me to the US for the US deal. At the moment, we know well the US is back on the back on Nauru. The They're doing more interviews. They've interviewed 300 odd people out of the 900 odd on Manus Island. There's about 70 have had you know have had medicals. It's still no indication at, at all of how many people will ultimately go from Nauru and Manus Island. But as I said, it was said earlier, that the fact, what we do know is that hundreds of people are going to be left behind. Even if that US deal is the, you know, the dot and I and the cross T, there still will be hundreds of people who are, you know, who are left behind. And I think that makes the uh, activities on July 19th, the vigils that have been, that have been called, you know, particularly, particularly important. But I think that brings me back to, what, to why we're here and why there's an army of people across Australia determined to keep you know, the fight going because the future of those people is going to depend upon what upon what we do. The fact is that there are over 300 odd people from Manus and Nauru in the Australian community at the, at the moment. Uh, they've, been, they've been told that their future is going to be determined by the US deal. They've been told that there'll be no future for them unless they go back to Nauru or back to Manus Island and become part of the part of the US deal. I think we have to make it very clear, as we did over the Let Them Stay campaign, as they did when they threatened to take baby Asher back to Nauru, the people who are in Australia are going to stay in Australia because there is a movement which will put themselves between those refugees and the Australian government if they try to shift even one of them you know, back to Nauru. We've kept them here now for over a year. They are going to stay in Australia. Their future remains in Australia. We need to be absolutely sure that they're going, they're going nowhere, nowhere other than in the Australian community.
second thing is about bringing, about bringing them here. We know that regardless of what some people may go to the US, the hundreds that are going to be left behind need to know that there is a movement which isn't going to forget about what's, about what's happened to them. There is going to still be a campaign you know, to, bring, you know, to bring them here. And that, that brings me to the question of the Labor Party. In the settlement over the, over the deal, it doesn't quite you know, easily try to flick. So it was the Labor Party who set up Manus Island. It was the Labor Party's agreement. It was the Labor Party's ultimately responsibility lost control you know, of the borders. I mean, Peter Dutton's lost control of other things. But, um, the, uh, and, but there, is a, there is a very, very strong element of truth about that. It was the Labor Party that opened Manus and Nauru. It was the Labor Party that signed the illegal deal between the Australian government and the Papua, and the Papua New Guinea government. And it is beholden on them to take some responsibility for that. I mean, I don't know Sharon, you know, in the, the local, local member here, but I'm very pleased to hear that there are protests outside the Labor Party's office here to make it very clear they need to take some responsibility. They have got to get, they have got to get off the fence and take some responsibility. Shane Newman couldn't even bring himself to make a comment when the, when the settlement came through. They couldn't even face up to the Labor Party's responsibility for that, you know, for that settlement deal. So there is a movement which needs to hold that account. In 18 months' time, maybe we'll get rid of the Turnbull government. Maybe we'll have a Labor government which actually says, you know, they're going to give us permanent visas and not temporary visas. But we need to have a government and the Australian Labor Party needs to know there's a movement that isn't going to go away until the detention centres are closed, until offshore processes are finished and we still, we still have that policy. Yep. So we still have a big campaign to, you know, to continue. We've got a, a, a minister that's, that's become the ugly face of a very ugly government. And that they, as, they, as they continue to slide in the polls, they continue to reach, to play the refugee card, to play the race card, and they will, they will continue to do that. Over citizenship, over fake refugees, and all the rest of it. The reason that they're not going to get away with it, and the reason they're going to keep falling in the polls, is because we are going to continue to keep, keep fighting. Yeah! <laughs> Woo -hoo! Thank you, Ian. We're getting near the close now.